Well, it's my job tonight to provide an opening or an introduction, actually. I think the official word in the, uh, the program is an introduction. Why do we give these introductions anyway? You know, most churches don't have this on their uh, schedule to have someone give an introduction. The purpose, I think, and you can ask Brother Gibbon to clarify this if you think I'm wrong, but I think the purpose of an introduction is really to answer, is simply to answer this question, why are we here? Why are we gathered here together? There's lots of other things I suppose we could be doing tonight. Most of you are already here once already today, and you're back again a second time. I hope that we're, I hope that we're not here just to fill a slot, just because this is our tradition or just because other churches don't have an evening service, so we have to have one. I hope that's not wh the only reason why we're here. I hope that we're here for more even than just each other's fellowship. Right. Now, we should, we should come together with the purpose of edification and encouraging one another. We come together because we, we care about one another. We love one another. We want to support each other. But there's even a higher purpose than that. You know, many churches, I think, fall into not only a routine, but they also can become very ingrown and think that really it's just about us and, and our group, whatever size of group that might be. There are big churches that have that kind of mentality and small churches that have that mentality. That's just really just about us. It's just about our group and our own interests. I hope that's not why we're here tonight. I hope we have a larger vision and a larger view than just saying hi to one another, and going through a, a predetermined uh, program. Why are we here? The thought I want to present to you here as we begin is that the reason we're here, the reason why we gather together, the reason why the church, any church, any individual church gathers together is because in some sense when we do this, when God's people are together, when the saints come together in Jesus' name, in some way, and you have to use faith to see this and understand this, but in some way, by faith, we are actually joining in with a much larger assembly Amen. that none of us can see with our physical eyes, but that nevertheless is very real. Now, to, to, to pin this down, I'm not just making this up. Uh, to pin this down, I want to go to a couple of scriptures here. The first one is in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. And the writer says, he says, first of all, he says, you have not come to Mount Sinai. That's not where we're gathering. We're not approaching God by law. We're not coming to Mount Sinai. But we are coming, we, we are coming somewhere, going somewhere. We're coming to an assembly. He says it's the general assembly and church of the firstborn. Amen. Excuse me, let me back up to the preceding verse. Ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. That's the assembly, actually, that we're coming to tonight. Amen. That's the assembly. We're joining this assembly tonight. Amen. We're joining the assembly. He calls it the general assembly, the church of the firstborn, the spirits of just men made perfect. And then, of course, in verse 24, he says, and to Jesus. We're coming to him as well. So what are we doing here tonight? Well, we're, we're coming to this great assembly of all saints who are now joined in with the heavenly order. And speaking of the heavenly order, the second verse or passage that I would direct your attention to here is in Revelations, cha Revelation chapters 4 and chapter 5. And I'll summarize some of this just for the length and the sake of time. But in chapter 4 of Revelation, John is caught up into heaven. He sees into heaven, and the first thing he sees is the throne of God. And the idea here is that at the very center of all reality is God, and God reigning over the world on his throne. 
Well, what's going on in heaven? Is it just a place of silence? No, there's, there's some activity there in heaven. Yeah. And John says, about the throne, around the throne, there were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. The first beast was like a lion, the second like a calf, the third beast had the face of a man, the fourth beast was like a flying angel. And the four beasts... And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. They worshiping God. And when these beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. What John saw here, and then in chapter 5, of course, he sees a lamb there sharing the throne of God. And just as all of heaven was worshiping the one seated on the throne, all of heaven then begins to worship the lamb that was slain, who is sharing the throne of God. So what does John see when he, when he saw into heaven? He saw, the, he saw God, the glory of God, but he saw personalities gathering around the throne of God to worship God, to give glory to God, to see aspects of God's character, holy, like Isaiah saw in Isaiah 6. Holy, 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 the angels say, is the Lord God Almighty. So what are we doing here tonight? We're joining with this heavenly assembly we're joining, we're, we're really merging with the eternal order. That's what we're doing here tonight. Amen. We're merging ourselves with the eternal order. We're, we're beginning to participate in heavenly realities right now, right here on the earth, right now together, we are entering into heavenly reality. You know, it's funny that people often think of religion as an escape from reality. People will say things as they're walking out of church, well, back to the real world. That isn't the case. Right. What we're doing now, what we're focusing on now, and we should be focusing on this every day, yeah. but it, w with particular uh, focus together, we're focusing on the real world. Amen. This is the real world. Amen. The spirits of just men made perfect. Amen. The throne of God. The Lamb of God sharing the throne of God. This is reality. That's right. And we are acknowledging reality. We are joining in with the heavenly worship. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing tonight. So I would encourage you tonight to, to give some focus to this, to give some thought to this. Let's not do this out of mere uh, habit. Yeah. Yes. Let's think about what we're doing. Let's give our best to the Lord no matter what it is that we do. So let me have a word of prayer, and then we'll, we'll begin to sing, just like in those verses that we read about. Our dear Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon our time together tonight. Father, it's often difficult for us in the flesh to gather together. We, we are weary sometimes from work and from illness. So help us, Father, to overcome the weakness of our flesh. Our, the Spirit's willing, Father, but the flesh is weak. So help us through the power of the Spirit to subdue our flesh tonight. Help us to focus our minds. We pray for everyone who speaks in this assembly tonight, whether it be from prepared, uh, a prepared message or whether it be in, in the midst of a discussion. Father, may our, may our speech be seasoned with salt. May it be full of grace. May it be unto edification. We pray, Father, for those who, are, who might be listening in and watching tonight over the Internet. We thank you for their... A focus and presence with us tonight as they join in with us. Father, we, we think about heaven at these times. We think about you. We think about your heavenly glory. We think about all of the saints that have gone before us, who have walked through this world and kept the faith, and who are now perfected in your presence, Father. We want to be like them. We want to be with you, to be where you are one day. And that is why we're gathered here, to prepare for that day. So we ask for your help and blessing tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.